What a fall, not seen Ninja here coming at you with another little talk about nothing. Uh, today's topic, as you read in the title, Bitcoin. We're going to talk about Bitcoin. Not about the history of Bitcoin or what Bitcoin is, because y'all can look that up on your own time. Uh, some of you already know what it is, some of you are completely clueless. Um, just basics, it's an online currency. That's really all you need to know. It's almost like the Japanese yen or some other currency that you currently don't possess. It's the same kind of thing. It's an online currency. Um, I want to talk rather into of my journey into Bitcoin. How I got into it, all that type of stuff, and where it led me today. So... Here it is. I had first heard of Bitcoin back in 2011, something in that area. Um, Steve Gibson, my favorite security researcher on the Twit Network, a show, he has a show called Security Now, um, twit.tv slash sn if you want to find it. Uh, he was on there with Tom Merritt. Uh, and they were talking about this crazy new online cryptocurrency, and the reason they were talking about it is because they, they talked about encryption and, and cryptology and that type of stuff a lot, and so they talked about the currency, which used that same technology. Um, I thought I'd take a look into it, since they were so excited about it, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, I had my computers at the time running what was called SETI at home. I'm pretty sure there's still a thing. And what SETI at home was, was basically it took your computer and lots of other computers stringed together, fed you data uh, from the telescopes around the world, and it was the search for extraterrestrial, in search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And... Um, Basically, your computer would just become a bot for them uh, using the CPU when you weren't using it, just crunching those numbers and trying to find something. And that's what excited me at the time, so that's what my computer's doing, but apparently this Bitcoin thing used that same technology, so I figured, let's, let's see what happens. And within a few months, I had 25 Bitcoins. At today's rates, that's a lot of money. But in those days, that was that was like twenty five cents. Like it was, it didn't actually mean anything because Bitcoin was still new and nobody knew what it was or what it can do. We always hear about the story about the guy that bought the Domino's pizza for a couple hundred Bitcoin, and that that's that's the hundred thousand dollar pizza. Um, where did I go from there? I forgot about it. I completely forgot about it. Uh, I had these 25 bitcoins, couldn't do anything with it, so I just kind of didn't do anything with it. Uh, a couple years later, bitcoin started building some steam, I started hearing about it again, so I dug up that old hard drive, and at that point in time, bitcoins were worth 100 bucks each. So I sold those bitcoins and bought a computer which I was going to dedicate to just mining bitcoins. I was very excited about that. Um, because in just a few months I was able to make like $2,500. So imagine what a computer, a good computer could do. That was not the case. Um, unfortunately, Bitcoin mining had become a lot harder at that point because many more people were getting into it. There were computers dedicated to it um, called ASICs, um, which is like a specialty computer built for a specific task. And in this case, it was mining Bitcoin. So the computer didn't do so well, so it just became my, my daily driver, um, and it did well for me. And then about a year later, in September of 2014, uh, I got back into it again, because um, now I was hearing about, the, about cheaper specialty computers, and how there was now altcoins, um, which were like branches off of Bitcoin. Uh, using the same general technology and the same general principle, but an alternate to it. And since most of them were new, they were easy to get into, easy to mine. So I did buy a couple uh, script miners, 
um, and mainly focused on Litecoin and Dogecoin. Um, and I hit hard and just started. It's, I put all the money from those miners back into getting more miners. That's why I have a room of miners right now. I bought Bitcoin miners, the the ASICs and stuff like that. Um, and it uh, money started pouring in. And I, I'm in a lucky uh, lucky situation here uh, in my apartment where I moved in in time that hydro is included or electricity is included uh, for my non-Canadian or non-Ontario people. Uh, hydro is electricity. So if I say hydro, I mean electricity. Um, and so because I'm not paying for electricity, it became very profitable very fast. I just started buying and buying and buying. Eventually, I bought a company which sold shares to another company that um, had a warehouse full of miners. And you basically, I was basically selling timeshares to that. And that was very lucrative until they went belly up. And I also lost quite a bit in that. Um, but I had gained a lot, so it's give and take. With the Bitcoin market, it's give and take. I've lost a lot of money. I've gained a lot of money. A lot of the um, the banks, the online banks, uh, Mt. Gox is is one of the biggest ones that went under. People lost millions of Bitcoins. Um, I lost quite a bit in that, too. When uh, What else was there? Cripsy. Cripsy went out under. I lost a lot in that one, too. Um, I had just withdrawn to and then they stopped it and so I wasn't able to get my money out um, and that was quite a bit of money. I, I, I've, I've lost quite a bit of money on this journey as well. Um, gained, lost, all that type of stuff. Now I still have the miners, miners going. Um, they're not as profitable as before of course because as more people get into it the difficulty rises which means it's harder to mine. Uh, and so you need more and more and more, and it just turned to a whole thing. Um, I don't know how well it comes out behind you, but behind you is a graph. A graph from Coindesk. Uh, that's the Bitcoin price over the past year. That's what's happened. Um, it's gone from, in December of last year, it was down at like 200 bucks a Bitcoin to 20 something in that area, US dollars. Um... And now, if I recall, it's up at seven something. Not the Seven fifty one, seven fifty seven point one U.S. dollars right now per Bitcoin. Um, and again, when I went and in, got into it, it was just pennies, pennies for a Bitcoin. Um, so anybody that stockpiled back then is laughing right now because it's back up in the seven hundred dollars per Bitcoin, and that's some good money. Um, I mean, I've definitely, I've, I've gained, I've lost. I, it was, it's all technology. I, I, at the very end of the day, I haven't lost any money. Um, I've done better than break even. Uh, even though there were times when I was down ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars because of these, uh, these online things shutting down. Um, but I've gained throughout that time as well, so it's kind of all evened out nicely. Um, would I recommend getting into Bitcoin now? It's tough now, because now everybody, it, it's a huge thing, everybody's gotten into it, um, the mining market is definitely flooded, uh, the difficulty has gone up so much that if you're just mining with a normal computer, I mean, you might, you might make a cent a day, if that, um, if you have hardcore GPUs even, uh, even with, even with ASIC miners that are a year old, you might make a dollar a day, two dollars a day, something in that area, just because there's so many people dedicated to mining now, or so many companies, or so many warehouses dedicated to mining that it, it and the electric, electricity, that's, that's where the, the big profit eater is um, because the faster the computer the more bitcoins you make but the more power it uses and so finding that balance there's um, that's why China is such a big producer of bitcoins because they have cheaper power 
especially for the enterprise markets where you have warehouses and that type of stuff, they pay almost nothing for power, so they're able to have that many more miners set up, and it works. Um, I still have uh, quite a few bitcoins spread across a couple of different wallets. Um, I think in total I might have maybe 12 or 13 bitcoins left. As it keeps going up and down, I was buying and selling for a while. I was playing it like the stock market, um, buying low, selling high, all that fun stuff. Um, and it's hard to keep that going through crashes, but I, I, I did, and I still have 13 bitcoin. Um, at one point in time, I was up at like 80 or so bitcoin. Um, but again, as prices fluctuated, as prices bounced all over the place, as you were able to buy more with Bitcoin and that kind of thing, I bought more with Bitcoin. And so, that's where I am today. Um, will it go up more? That's a prediction that I have no idea. It seems to, every year it seems to, or every two years it seems to do this. So, one year in December, it's up at $1,000, and then the next year, it's down at 200. Then it's up at a, like it keeps doing that kind of roller coaster thing. Um, basically, it moves almost at the same, um, has almost the same chart angles as gold and silver does. Um, somehow those are related. I don't know how, but they are. Um, so it, if if it's just, if you're looking at something for just a hobby, yeah, yeah, mess around with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's fun. Um, if you're nerdy, Bitcoin's definitely a fun thing. Uh, if you buy online a lot, Bitcoin can make things a lot easier. It's just a couple clicks. Um, as easy as a credit card, I would say. It's just also a couple clicks. Um, but I like Bitcoin. Um, yeah. There's, there's been things like Silk Road. Um, which was an online marketplace that only that was on the dark web um, that sold stuff like drugs and weapons and all that type of stuff, all the illegal stuff that's out there. Um, there's been a couple of those. It happens. That's why Bitcoin got a bad name for a bit, not only because of the banks shutting down and people losing a lot, but also the illegal use of it just because it is an anonymous cryptocurrency. Um, I personally have never bought anything illegal with it. Um, anything I buy, all my firearms, all whatever, I like cash, personally. Um, so I mean, it's had some, it's had some black marks, but all in all, Bitcoin is, it is definitely a hobbyist currency, and it is definitely fun. Um, just watching the numbers bounce all over the place, watching, uh, watching the news and how that affects what's happening in the Bitcoin market. Um, yeah. Are any of you guys into Bitcoin? Tell me your Bitcoin story. I want to hear how you either make a video and link to me or just put it in the comments. Um, I want to hear from you. I want to know what your Bitcoin story is. See if it's anything like mine. See if... Have you had better experiences than I have? Have you not lost any? Have you lost it all? Um, what's been your personal experience with, with Bitcoin? Because it, just reading stories from other people, it ranges so much, it's incredible. Um, and I'm definitely interested to hear what you have to say. Have a good one.